Hi, I'm Jordan Rhodes. Welcome to Norwich City Central. What's going on, Lewis from Norwich City Central? This is going to be my top five players of the season. This is probably the hardest um, hardest ever season when you've had to try and vote for a player of the season because there's so, been so many cracking performances. Uh, there's even been a few people saying it should be a team award, but... Uh, that, that's, that shouldn't be the case. This is going to be my top five players of the season. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. Um, and yeah, I think there could be potentially a wide range of suggestions. Um, for my top five list, I think any of the top four could win it. I'd be extremely happy with any of the top four winning it. You've got the likes of Tom Tribal and Ben Godfrey. They've both been great in the second half of the season, but you know they didn't really have a spell in the first half of the season. And you've got the likes of Rancic and Leitner, but... Um, I mean, they haven't probably played enough minutes to to, to, to deserve a player of the season. So, um, yeah, this is going to be my player of the season. Uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts as well. So, number five, Marco Stieperman. Uh Who would have thought he would have the season he'd had? No one. Um, you know, he, he's, he's six foot. He's over six foot. He comes across a bit lanky, a bit um, a bit of an unorthodox number ten. But he's been absolutely superb for Norwich City. Seven goals, six assists, and an average rating of seven on who scored one, two, three. Um, and yeah, his physicality is so important to the team. Daniel Farker, um, there's been no outfield player who's played more than Marco Sheep, and, and, and that's credit to him. And he's really important to the system. When teams press us high, we go long, and Marco Sheep is someone who can control the ball, um, almost acts like a target man, and then we can beat the pressing and, and attack from there. So he's really important to the team, his physicality. Uh, and yeah, his hold up plays very good, and, and, and then the likes of Emi Buendia, um, Ono Hernandez can attack from there. Really good player, as I said, seven goals, six assists. Um, love his celebrations as well. He, he's my fifth player of the season. Number four, da, 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 Crystal Zimmerman. Uh, absolute class. Um, average rating of eight, uh, 6.81. He's just a warrior, isn't he, at the back? And since he's took that captain's armband, you can see, you can see what a great player he is. But he's always had great leadership skills. Um, you know, he, he's very verbal on the pitch. He, he's, he's always shouting at his back line. Um, yeah, w wins a lot of headers, great at the aerial duels, scored of a couple of great headers this season, and um, he, 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 he yeah, epitomises everything what a Norwich City player should be about. He's brought from Germany, the fourth tier of Germany, with no experience of, of you know, uh, English football, uh, and he's been absolutely superb, hasn't he? Um, he doesn't moan, he just gets on with it, and, he, and he's a real inspiration, I guess, to some defenders on how to play football, because he just gets on with it. Um, very patient, uh, and when he takes a chance, he definitely does. Uh, number three, Emi Buendia. Now, uh, I mean, he had an okay first half of the season, and I think if, if I think if he replicated some of the performances he did in March earlier on in the season, he'd definitely be even more of a contender for that number one spot. But Emi Buendia, eight goals, eleven assists, and an average rating of seven point three nine. Or who scored? He's absolute class, isn't he? He's football heaven. Um, it's his creativity and fluidity on the pitch, isn't he? He's so creative on the ball. and We've been missing Emi Buendia in the last couple of games uh, and we, we've seen the effects because we slightly lose that creativity. He's so good at getting in between the lines, connecting defence and attack. Uh, as I said, eight goals you know, and 11 assists as well. He's a brilliant playmaker. Um, and he's, he reminds us of Wes Houlihan, doesn't he, on the ball. It's his little tricks on and off the ball. I always remember that assist for the whole goal. Um, well, it wasn't it, it was his goal. But where he flicks it on to Pukin and Pukin laid it back to him. Superb player um, and we'll be lucky to keep hold of him. A real, real gem. Um, and great credit to the scouting system of Norwich City. Number two, Max Aarons for me. Um, incredible. and uh, Two goals, six assists, an average rating of 6.93. A youth player. He came into the side when he was 18 years old and he's played. So, he's been so mature. He's never had a problem with his attitude and he's a credit to all the youth players and all the youth players in the under 23 system, under 18 system will look up to him as an inspiration because he's been incredible. Um, he, get, he gets forward a lot as well, doesn't he, under the system, under Daniel Farker. And he's got him product as well. Uh, six assists um, in that right back role is incredible. Good crossing. Um, as I said, he's bombing bombs down the right. He's a star man. And yeah, really, really impressed with him. And, and he kind of epitomises everything Weber was trying to do. Weber, when he came into the club, said he wanted to implement youth players into the team. So, um, you know, potentially we could sell them on for big money, which will help the finances of the club. And we're going to do that with Max Adams. He's a superb player and he's destined for the top. What an incredible first season. That leaves the number one spot, Timu Puki. Who else? The GOAT. 27 goals at the time of recording, 9 assists and an average rating of 7.30. 
he's just incredible, isn't he? And for me, he's for me, I pick him in the number one spot over the other players just because of how critical his late goals have been. Um, you know, the 97th minute against Millwall, 93rd minute against Bolton, uh, 87th minute against Blackburn. So many, you know, recently against Wigan, he just scored so many late goals, and we, I don't think we'd be in the top two without him because. It's his composure in front of goal, his clinical nature, which have allowed us to, um, you know, add so many points to our tally this season. Um, and it's also his work rate off the ball. He, he's always chasing down defenders. He never gives up. He's got he's got a fantastic work rate, defensive work rate, nine assists as well. Um, that shows he's a team player. Um, and it, honestly, he's just absolutely fantastic. And he could potentially be a record breaker as well. The top scorer in the championship is uh, Glenn Murray with 30 goals all time. Timmy Pookie could potentially get that 27 goals at the time of recording, but no, he's an absolute sensational player, very clinical, and uh, works incredibly hard for the team. So that's my top five players of the season. Do you agree? I'd love to hear your thoughts down below in the comments. Uh, I think the Player of the Season award is now closed, so I don't think you can vote no more, but it's going to be really interesting to see who wins it. Is it going to be Timmy Pookie? Are Norwich City players going to go with the youth players like uh, Max Ahrens? Um, and yeah, it's going to be really interesting. There's so many players who could potentially win it. I haven't even mentioned the likes of Jamal Lewis and Ono Hernandez. But yeah, thanks for watching this video. Uh, leave me your thoughts down below. Say subscribe to Norris City Central. And yeah, I'll see you later.